Titan it, hit that like button, share and subscribe. Yes, won't you come celebrate my birthday with me? This is Black Titanic, my birthday. Clap your hands, it's my birthday. Yes, happy birthday to Black Titanic. On this day in history, July the 2nd, 1964, I wanted to see what's significant in Black history as it relates to the Professor Kiki. I wanted to see, and look what it is, you guys. President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 into law and July the 2nd, 2024, Kiki passed, professor, a wife, a mother, a college professor, you guys, reality star, but he signed the Civil Rights Act into so what they say president johnson signed into law the landmark civil rights acts of 1964 on july the 2nd 1964. the legislative abolished segregation in business such as theater restaurant and hotel we believe that all men are created equal, said Johnson, upon signing the act into law. Yet many are denied equal treatment. The Civil Rights Acts also banned discriminatory practice in employment and in the segregation in public places such as swimming pools, library, public schools. The act stands as the most far-reaching civil rights legislation uh, on the, in the, and since the construction era. But not for me. Who would have ever thought that your own people would practice those discriminatory uh, practice on you? It's been banned. It's been ended segregation in public places. It's been banned, you guys. And I hear that. I'm a guy boots on the ground, but I call it recording history. If I'm out recording history, I got to hear my my people say, she don't belong down in, down there in that public place. She don't belong down there at that woman's business. Well, why don't you just go ahead on and put a white only sign up there because the end of segregation was done in 1964. More than a year before Johnson, President Kennedy delivered, y'all know Kennedy was the president, then he got assassinated, then Johnson took over. But more than a year before President uh, Kennedy delivered a nation, national radio and TV address on civil rights and proposed what became the Civil Rights Act. Uh, Kennedy called discrimination against African American a moral crisis and said that equality could not be obtained through the law alone. It cannot be met by repressive police action, Kennedy said. It cannot be left to increase demonstration in the street. It cannot be quiet by token monies or talk. It is the time for the act of Congress in your state and local legislation body and above all in our daily lives. So what, what am I supposed to do when my own people tells me I don't belong in public spaces? 
when my own people tell me I don't belong in business. Now, I'm not recording history, right? Stay away from my family and keep your name out of your mouth. And the same energy that you showed towards her when she was alive, you don't love her. You never loved her. So don't even post that. Because if you loved her, it is no way possible that you can make a lies about her and her family and, and, and tell the piece of information about her life that should be private to a family that you fed to these bloggers so they could ridicule her, cause her to have haters, cause people to disrespect her. That's what you did. And you pushed her. You pushed her to this. Yeah. So we blame you. Absolutely. Yeah. We blame you. She would be here if it wasn't for that stupid ass show. So, like I said, your sorry ass daughter, that big ass son of all yours, and all you sorry motherfuckers that's part of that show, please, I'm asking you from, the, from a place of love. I'm a place of love. I'm asking you to allow us to be keep you in peace without your presence. Mm. Oh, Ooh, that is. So Kiki walks through the door and she is so happy. Oh, la, oh, la, she says. She says, oh, la, because she's happy. I come to apologize in person to all of you. She looked at Kimmy. Oh, wow. Kimmy was so mean to her. And she apologized to her. And instead of Kimmy accepting the apology, she said it with a nasty tone that was over two months ago. And she tried to explain, well, I just didn't know how to. I just didn't know how to go about doing this, she said. Well, Anyway, you guys, I don't know what, anyway, you guys, so um, she was discriminated against in that house. She really was discriminated against in that house, y'all, from our own people. Clear people is looked upon with a problem. Their problem is that they need to go get treatment, medical treatment. But us, our own people, looked upon this girl with disdain. She was discriminated allegedly from the cast. She was discriminated from production. Y'all saw how they portrayed this girl. They didn't do this girl right. And uncle is right. She was discriminated against. She came there to apologize and they rejected her. And Miss Neil, or was did that low down dirty job told her she had to go discrimination from my own people within slavery i'm kwame akutoba uh, i'm an artist uh, educator and cultural activist i'm trying to portray what our ancestors went through trying to immerse in the enslavement experience all cut across 400 years so we have uh, various narratives, we have various people from different tribes, we have various states in which they were before they were captured. There were those who were prisoners of war, there are those who were just purely kidnapped, there were those who were coerced, there are those who were clueless as to what was really happening. There are just so many narratives and it's not a single story and hence the decision to make it on this scale so that um, even though we cannot create as many sculptures as our ancestors who we lost, we will have clear uh, representation of what really happened. We are using human heads because it's, the art itself is paying homage to our ancient practice, our current practice of creating portraits of the dead walking through the, the sculptures all come with a, with a series of feelings. Whilst at one point I am happy that I am able to tell the story, uh, the moment when you place a, a, a head amongst a lot is very significant of one other person being captured. I want to 
brings the installation to be that point of reference for us to realize how great we were, what went wrong, and the possibility of us getting our greatness back. Okay, you guys, this this ain't this ancestor project. There are just so many narratives. And it's not a single story hence to discuss uh to make it on this scale. There's not one single story y'all to tell. It's so many narratives. The artist's name is Kawami Akoto Bampo, a Ghana sculpture, has created the Ancestors Project, Portrait of Africans Who Were in Prison, Kidnapped, or Coerced into Slavery. Well, what really happened, I want to say, this was a holocaust. The African holocaust. We talked about every other ethnic group holocaust except for ours. So we had our own holocaust back in Germany before Hitler came. And then... We had our holocaust, you call it the slave trade, slavery, right here in America. What happened to the slaves after they were free? They went into concentration camp called the Mississippi Devil's Pond. 24, looks like I'm gonna need the Green Book. The Green Book is, were created where these are these black holes. So black people know where, where they can go, where they can't go. So in 1964, July 2nd, which is a, a significant day, the passing of Kiki, right, you guys? Also July 2nd, 1964, was the signing of the Civil Rights Act. Ban you from being discrimination in public places. But looks like my people. I never would have thought that my own people, my own people would be discriminating against me. This old lady out trying to record history. When I go out there in that public parking space up to this girl business, there's history that's storming naked. Well, does she look at me as a troublemaker or not? But Canvas Beauty is history making. 100 years from now, Canvas Beauty probably going to be aiming at it's a way only way on. But no, this old lady right here got it recorded. No, Canvas Beauty was black on business. Because here it is, Miss BT had boots on the ground. Miss BT was out recording history. What about Melody, all of her products, Seven Avenue? This is history making, you guys. Bless this. I've been bit by dogs. I've been beat up. I've been almost harmed to, for you guys, you young people, to be able to walk the streets safely. For you young people to have the business, business that you have, only to be told, get away from here. You don't belong here. Get back. And then to be ridiculed all over the internet. I was trying to record history. Let's just see the green book. I guess I got to get my green book back out again because for me. Now the whites only sign, we don't have to worry about them. They are always welcome in our establishment. <laughs> The Green Book. This is WMAR2 News. Welcome to a special edition of WMAR2 News. I'm Patrick B. And I'm Alpha S. From 1936 to 1966, The Green Book was published annually as a guide to safe places that black people could travel, dine, and recreate. Many of those locations are still in use today in Maryland, including right here at the Druid Hill YMCA. History, hiding in plain sight. Today, the Black Lives Matter movement has sparked a new age green book, showcasing black-owned businesses 
and the need to support them. Join us as we journey from the Green Book of yesterday to the Green Book of today. Right now we're in front of 119 East 5th Street, and this is one of the homes that was listed in the Green Book. From its inception, I believe, in 1938 up until 1966, the last edition. It was important because they called it a vacation without aggravation for us to be able to travel freely and to avoid any run-ins with police or just to be safe. It was more of a safety feature for African Americans traveling at that time. Travel for African Americans probably was very scary just because of all the hate. We were coming, we were living in Jim Carter. We was coming out of the um, the slavery area. And, and what happened, We be, once we began to acquire wealth, and it was no longer given back to the masters, we began to buy autos. And that's why Mr. Gr Mr. Green came up with the Green Book, because once we started traveling, we saw that that was barriers. So this was really a necessity. So what necessity did I run into? What did I run into while I'm out, boots on the ground, recording history, I am being ridiculed. Everybody's talking about me on the internet. Look at her. She ain't got no business at that business. Yeah. This is what you guys are saying. But did I need a green book to record the history of my own people? Do I need that? Do, do What do I need? A sign? Whites only again? Blacks only again? Sign? Yeah. What did what they say, call the police on. She came to your business, call the police on. This old lady called the police on. Trying to say that I'm in a park. In the public parking space where 1964 has got rid of that, I, I can be out there in a public space. And I fought. I got beat up. I had got, got everything on my eyeballs, socket almost been bit at. Titties almost been up. Why? So that the young people that's screaming and yelling at me today can have these business. So that you guys can walk freely down the road. But I get ridiculed, made fun of, laughed at, telling me I don't belong. For African Americans to be able to just ride through the country, country freely, you know, just explore the USA just like everybody else does without riding on the train, without using the bus services. So this was definitely a necessity for us to live in the United States of America and do so and do it safely. As the popularity of the Green Book grew and hotels refused to provide lodging for black people, more families began to open their homes to guests. And while there may have been men in the homes, it was the women's names who were listed in the Green Book. I often say that the, the women and the people of Frederick, these were the pre-modern Airbnbs of what we say today. They had, you know, they had a room, they made their home accessible. Um, I spoke to her daughter, Miss Sandra Maker, who is also a member of ART, and um, she said she recalls her grandmother housing a school teacher. She doesn't remember if any famous people came through. Um, this, of course, our interest in the Green Book was heightened by the fact that Don Shirley, the classical pianist, in the movie. This gentleman says that I'm not permitted to dine here. I'm afraid not. How does he smile and shake their hands like that? Because it takes courage to change people's hearts. So, you heard what she said. A school teacher was, they, they had... This green book had a place where the school teacher, somebody like professor right here, that she wanted to go somewhere. There was that green book could tell you, okay, it's safe to go right here. Now let's just listen, since they brought up Stormy, let's talk about Stormy Mama Betty. The pool, y'all. This woman is shaming other African American children for being in the pool. Let's get it going. Actually played in this town at TJ, which is probably a mile or so away from this location. 
So of course, our question was, did your did Mr. Shirley stay here when he was at Frederick? And she said she did not know that. Um, but she did remember that their house was open, especially after her grandfather had passed. And just a few blocks away from the Mako home, we found another site listed in the Green Book. And when we arrived, we found Buddy's Barbershop. Did you know that you were sitting in a Green Book site? No, I didn't until the gentleman came in and told Buddy. Deborah Hill grew up in Frederick and had heard about the Green Book before, but had no idea that the barbershop she used to bring her little brother to and now brings her grandson to was once a safe haven for African Americans looking for a place to stay. They're going, now just check this out. If someone was not out there recording history, how we would have known about this place? See, that's why I come in when I'm out here in the streets recording the history. One day, one day they're going to say, well, you know, Canvas Beauty was right there. Canvas Beauty was right here, too. And Canvas Beauty was over there, too. History making, that's what this girl was doing. But I get ridiculed. History. Her mama seems to ridicule little children when it comes to being in the swimming pool. She seems to ridicule uh, me coming to a public space out there in that parking lot. I'm in the parking lot. Just get to the stores, the eating stores. Uh, you couldn't sit and eat if you had to, you know, if you went to buy something, you buy it, you bring it home. Uh, there was segregation with the schools, even the theaters, the movies. When we went to, uh, uh, it was called the Tivoli at the time. Um, the blacks had to sit upstairs and the whites sat downstairs. And there were times if it was a big production and we get a lot of white kids coming, they would come upstairs and would push us, would push us up higher. So I remember those days, yeah, we had to sit up and, and upstairs and all the whites was, had to sit downstairs. Now, who did I open doors for? Ha, huh? my soul. My soul used to work at a movie theater. Now, I've been bit. Whole spike been out on me, almost hung, so he could have that grip. But what did I do? Now, I'm just this old lady, just a stalker. Out creating history, making sure that your business don't get lost in the shovel that candy beauty will become a hundred years from now. I'm quite old. Let's keep it going. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, segregation. They wanted our money, but they didn't want us. And uh, that's just the way it was. We had to go around to the back and to get served. And, uh, and that's just the way it was doing that job. Buddy's uncle opened up the shop at 22 West All Saints in 1955, but from 1922 to 1947, it was the home and art studio of William and Esther Greenwich. William was... So that's all I was trying to do, you guys, is record history like, like these people do. Stormy says, she's stalking me. She came to my, she came to my warehouse. She's, no, I'm not. I'm recording history. History. Canvas Beauty muscles right here. 100 years from now, Candace Beauty was right here at this spot. Candace Beauty was at that spot. Candace Beauty was at that warehouse right there. Recording history. She made millions. She has a story from going from, from poorness to richness. History making. Yeah. But what's happening to me? I'm being discriminated against. I'm the one that's saying that I don't belong here. Coming out of my own black people now. Coming out of young folks. Call me, say they ain't got no teeth. And I knew when that white man took that bat and knocked me in my mouth with that for trying to right, make a better future for my children. Now I got to get made fun of. I ain't got no teeth in my mouth, but you're able to go start a business. Yeah, I got my teeth knocked out because why? I'm out there trying to fight for the future of our children like you, Stormy. Like you, prosperity stick, stick girl. 
screaming and yelling. Yeah, she took us up there to storm this business. Oh, wow, what did I hear? Discrimination. Discrimination, like she a, a white woman telling me I ain't got no business being at this woman's business. I'm trying to record history. She was segregated. Segregated, at least she was in the room with a group of white supremacists. As if she was that one black guy. And yes, Uncle Ellis, I agree. I agree with you, Uncle Ellis. That trip, that trip in Houston was overwhelming from her because they segregated that girl. They told the girl she couldn't stay in the house. They segregated her. They discriminated against her. And that's it. Kiki, rest in peace.